Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday celebration. It's the ninth uh, Sunday after Pentecost. And our opening sentence is, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life from the Gospel of John. And today we're going to be looking at the scripture and looking specifically at the words that um, Paul has written and um, how uh, we are to hear those and take to our heart. Let us begin with prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So as I um, said, we're going to be listening to the words of Paul. I most often uh, preach from the gospel. I'm a gospel kind of gal, that's, uh, that's usually my preference, um, but this is one of my favorite passages, and um, I believe there's some really important things that we need to hear, or certainly I need to be reminded of. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans. We know all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he has also predestined to be conformed into the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within the large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he has also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ, who died, yes, who was raised, and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate, who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we were killed all day long. We were accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, this is one of my favorite passages. Uh, and uh, it has really a radical message that I think we all need to be uh, reminded of. As I said, I know I do. Um, it's commonly read, or part of it is read, at funerals. And it's one that I want at my own funeral. But today, let's look at it because it wasn't written for a funeral. It was written to the people of Rome, to a persecuted church. It was written for comfort and hope in our lives. So I'd like to break down the reading into three parts, three phrases that were said by Paul and are, are important for us to remember and to hold in our hearts. The first is verse 28. 
we know that God works all things together for good. Life can be hard sometimes, really hard for some people. And we wonder why things happen. I mean, I'm sure all of us at one point have gone, why me? You know, or why is this happening? And it may be illness or injustices, it may be injury or persecution. And it can be on a personal level as well as a communal level. Something tragic happening in the community. Um, bigger uh, or more broader, you know, why is there war between Russia and Ukraine? Uh, why is so-and-so struggling with addiction? Why can't I find the job that I want? Life can be tough. And I've heard people say, uh, God makes things happen so that we can learn from them. Or even I've heard, you know, God makes things happen to punish people uh, for their iniquities. That makes no sense. <laughs> Jesus showed us a, a God of love and compassion and mercy. Uh, our loving God created us in love to commit, continue the mission of Jesus in the world. That is to spread the good news, the love and compassion and mercy and redemption of God to all. In God's wisdom, though, he gave us, gave humanity free will. And that allows evil to exist, to happen, because of our imperfection. But we have to remember, it's not God's will. We're, we, we are assured, though, that regardless of the situation, God will use all things to work all things together for good. Sorry, let me say that again. God will use it to work all things together for good. We need to trust when things seem really bad or unjust, or misguided, whatever it is, we need to trust that God is always working things to good. And it can be hard, and oftentimes it takes some distance, but if we look, we will see how God has made a bad situation or experience an opportunity for growth and to be closer to God. Let me be clear though, it won't change what happened it doesn't take something that was horrible and make it unhorrible. That is not what I'm speaking about. There are terrible things in this world that we, we need to acknowledge and um, work to, to improve or heal. So it won't make something horrible unhorrible. If there's, I don't think there's a word unhorrible, but, but there is always something good even in the worst of situations. The second phrase is, if God is for us, who can be against? Well, I bet most of you have had the experience of at least feeling that others are against you, or perhaps very clearly that there are people against you. Um, we know that it's the experience for many who do not fit the white, Christian, heterosexual mold, um, in, at least in first world countries. But what Paul is saying here is that in the big picture, in the story of our lives and in the culmination of our death, the only thing that is important is God is with us and God is for us. What others think, say, or do has no bearing. God is for us regardless of our situation, regardless of what we have done or not done. God, being our loving creator, only wants the best for us and will always seek to be present to us, to support us and love us. The scripture further says that God allowed his only son to die for us. If he's willing to allow his son to die for us, what possibly more could he hold back? <laughs> You know, he, he will not hold back from us. God allowed Jesus to die so that we would know how much we are loved. The last um, line of scripture is, is longer, and it's actually uh, one of the phrases of comfort we often read in the Anglican Church uh, at a funeral. 
I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul even makes a list of things that he has already experienced and the Roman community has or will uh, probably experience. He asks if hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword could separate anyone from God. And the answer is a clear and resounding no, nothing, even death, nothing in all creation will separate us from the love of God. No thing can possibly do that. You know, it's funny, we as flawed human beings often in our minds kind of think, oh yeah, but <laughs> this'll do it. <laughs> you know, and, and we do that with other people. Oh, if people knew, you know, and it, God, we know God knows, and we think, oh, there's not possibly, because I just am not living up to the standards, you know. How could God love me after I've done this? Or, or because I'm this, how could lo God love that person because of what they did or who they are? It's so hard for us to fathom a love that is so beyond our, our capabilities so beyond our understanding and beyond our imagining. We often try to put God in our uh, limited abilities and God is so much more and his love is so much more. God, our Father, with the Son and the Spirit, loves us more than we can ever imagine. This is a radical assurance that we are always loved by God. And that's Paul, what Paul wants us to know. He wants us to feel, feel that in our hearts, to write it down in our hearts. So I invite you to mark your Bible. Come to these words whenever you feel alone, unworthy, unloved, confused, frightened, Come to these words anytime you need to be reminded that you are wholly loved by God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.